Hello and welcome to the second part of lecture 11, basically the last lecture of Tripoli 23. In, in, this lecture, in this part of the lecture, we'll be discussing what would happen if we terminate a transmission line with an arbitrary load Z sub L. Okay. So, if we have a load Z sub L, let that be uh, the origin, okay? At this point, Z is equal to zero. And at this point, the voltage at Z sub L is some voltage V sub zero. And some current here that flows through Z L is I sub L. So if the voltage is uh, Z sub, uh, sorry, if the voltage is V naught and current is, sorry, not I sub L, Rather, it's I sub zero. Then by Ohm's law, the relationship between V sub zero and I sub zero is that V sub zero over the impedance ZL is equal to I sub zero. Since Z is equal to zero, we invoke that here. Since Z is equal to zero here, let's just substitute it in the general solution of our transmission line uh, function. So we get two equations and two unknowns. And we can solve for the amplitude of the forward traveling wave and the backward traveling wave or reverse traveling wave. We can get these two equations right here. Sorry, these two expressions rather. So basically, the voltage wave is defined by this equation. Current wave is defined by this equation. We can relate the forward wave and the reverse wave by uh, their ratios. It's actually equal to this equation right here. So if we have a transmission line, all right, if we have a transmission line right here, this is terminated by some load Z sub L, a forward traveling wave, right? hits this Z sub L, creates a voltage V sub zero and a current I sub zero. And a consequence of that is a backward wave or reverse traveling wave is actually created. Okay? And it actually collides with the forward traveling wave. So in general, if we have a transmission line, then we connect it with a load. The voltage, a voltage wave hits the load. And this voltage wave uh, is reflected, some of it is reflected back to the source. So let's consider some special cases. What if we have an open circuit? An open circuit is that when the, uh, the impedance approaches infinity. So if this expression approaches infinity, then the limit of this as ZL approaches infinity becomes 1. So the reflected voltage is basically equal to, uh, basically your uh, reflected voltage is equal to your forward voltage. Okay. If we have a short circuit when ZL is 0, right here and right here, this becomes zero. The ratio of your reflected wave and your forward wave is equal to negative one. Your uh, reverse wave is traveling in uh, out of phase, rather, right, out of phase with your forward wave. Right? Basically, all of the power is reflected back when you have an open circuit and a short circuit. All of the power that you are that you have uh, that you used to power your transmission line is actually reflected back. So if you have an open circuit, voltage wave traveled here is reflected back. If you have a short circuit, 
the power that you actually tried to power your circuit is also reflected back. That's why it's not wise to leave a radio. If you have a radio, a radio can uh, transmit at very high frequencies. If you have a radio that is left open or short, when you try to power that radio, that power is reflected back to you and it could break your radio. Essentially, an open circuit and a short circuit when we're dealing with high frequencies is bad. So the best thing to do if you have a radio is to uh, terminate it with what we call a match load condition. That way, when ZL is equal to Z, not Z sub 0 or the characteristic impedance, there is no reflected wave. Okay? And that's also the condition of your maximum power transfer. Okay, so it's always wise to terminate your radios with a match load. So because of reflections in our uh, circuit, standing waves are actually created. So if you have an incident wave and the reflected wave, for, for example, consider the matched case. Consider the matched case. Okay. So your incident wave is the blue one. Reflected wave is the red one. Your incident wave at some point coincides with the reflected wave, creating a uh, constructive interference. At, at some point, your incident wave is also is now 180 degrees out of phase with your reflected wave, creating destructive interference. As a result, if you have a forward and backward traveling wave, a standing wave is created that oscillates between maximum and minimum in some portions and uh, is actually zero in other portions. Now, we want to know what will happen to the impedance when you go along our transmission line. So when you measure the voltage at this point to this point, you will measure a different voltage from this point to this point. Okay? So in general, by Ohm's law, the impedance at this point is defined by its position from the load. We assume that this part is when Z is equal to zero. So if we move away from the load, what would happen to the impedance seen when we are measuring from this part to this part? Okay. So it's actually uh, can actually be derived using your V of Z and I of Z. If you simplify this big expression, let's go back. If you simplify this big expression divided by this big expression, you'll be left with this equation right here. Okay? So the uh, impedance, Z of Z, actually, is actually, excuse me, your impedance, Z of Z, is actually, uh, generally, changes with respect to the position where you measure it. Consider the special case when we have a quarter wavelength of a transmission line. So that means Z is equal to lambda over 4. We know that beta is equal to 2 pi over lambda. So when we multiply beta and Z, we get pi over 2. And tangent pi over 2 is equal to infinity. So basically, you take the limit of this expression as tangent beta Z approaches infinity, and you'll get this simple equation right here that we call the quarter wave transform. The geometric mean of the terminating load multiplied by the load measured at some point lambda over 4 away from the load is equal to the characteristic impedance of the transmission line. So if we have an open circuit as our load after one quarter wave, your open circuit would now seem to be a short circuit. Okay? The open circuit transformed into a short circuit. Does that make sense? 
Okay, let's go back right here. So I told you we are measuring at different points in the circuit. Okay, if you look at this standing wave, this is the voltage at every point from here to here. Some points, the voltage is constantly at zero. That means the amplitude of the voltage at this point is zero. Since the impedance is equal to voltage divided by the current, since the voltage at this point is zero, the impedance at this point is also zero. However, the termination here is an open circuit. So that means after traveling one-fourth of a wavelength from the transmission line, your open circuit would seem to be a short circuit. And actually, that behavior is also true when we do the reverse. If we terminate our transmission line with a short circuit, after a quarter of a wavelength away from the short circuit, it would behave as an open circuit. Essentially, an open circuit and a short circuit are the same within our transmission line theory. That's why you should never terminate your radios with an open circuit. Okay? Common sense dictates when you've already had this common sense, you should never short a circuit, especially when it's running from a live wire. However, if you're gonna if you're gonna look at radios, you should never open them or short them, since both of those cases actually ruin the radio. So you should always terminate it with a match load because the match load even after okay even after a uh, quarter wavelength is still the same match load okay so that's the end of this lecture and the end of your Tripoli 23 lectures congratulations you have made it this far if you have any questions about our discussion just leave a comment in the comment section below thank you for listening and thank you for taking the journey with me I hope you'll be able to with this you'll be able to pass the course and good luck on your higher Tripoli subjects see you when I see you